Yeah, how's everybody doing? Hope everybody's staying healthy with their families and whatnot with, uh, you know, the way things are currently. Um, you know, really excited to add a guy like Anthony McFarlane. Um, I think he's a good fit to the room, good compliment to what's already on our roster. Obviously, we had some familiarity with him, um, be it Coach Tomlin and his connection to Maryland with Dino or, or Coach Canada having coached him in 18. Um, in both those regards, people speak very highly of him. Um, you look at the tape, he offers um, a change of pace um, to, to our room. Um, I think he'll be, to, be a great addition. Really excited to get him in the fold and um, get a chance to, uh, once we get uh, a chance to get back out there and work with him, um, I'm really excited. With that, I'll take any questions. All right, thanks, Eddie. Here, the first question we have will be from Joe Rudder at the Tribune Review. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, Eddie, you said he brings a change of pace. What does he do that maybe the other guys in your room don't do? Well, I mean, he's he's really explosive. I mean, um, you know, one game that pops right to your head, the 2018, they played Ohio State. and um, He rushed for uh, near 300 yards in that game. Um, but, you know, he sees a crease. He has the ability to hit the crease. He gets the zero to 60 really quick, um, quick to speed, and, and, and has shown the ability to, to uh, hit the long ball. Um, so, you know, that's a little bit of a change um, from what we got. We have those people who are capable of doing it, but he, um, you know, when you compare him to the likes of, um, you know, the Connors and the Snells and that, he's a, he's a little different type of runner, which I think makes us more uh, valuable as a group. Okay, next question, Andrew Stocky from Channel 4. Andrew, go ahead. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Thank you very much for taking the time. He says he sees himself as a versatile player. Does that mean you see him also as a guy who catches the ball in the backfield as well as runs to the corner and takes off with that explosiveness downfield? Absolutely. And, and like we, uh, I mentioned earlier, Coach Canada, Matt Canada had him there at Maryland, so he can speak to kind of his versatility. Um uh, you know, when he coached him there a couple years ago. But, um, yes, he's, he's shown the ability to catch the ball. Um, he's, he's shown the ability to um, run the ball outside, inside. Um, he has, you know, he has that versatility that you're looking for, an all-around guy. Um, and, you know, like I said, I think he's a good compliment. Okay, next up, Jerry Dulac with the Post-Gazette. Jerry, go ahead. Hey, uh, Coach, did you have to um, rely more on the 2018 tape with Anthony because of, um, you know, he had that high ankle sprain last year? Well, um, I, you know, I'm the type of person who I want to make sure I dot the I's and cross the T's. So whether it's Anthony McFarland or anybody else that we're looking at evaluating, I really try to dive into not just this year and the past years. In this case, with him having some injury issues, yes, the 18 tape did uh, bode well for him. Um, you know, quite honestly, um, you know, he could have, a guy like him, uh, if he's helped you all last year, probably um, he is even a little higher um, a, a, as a pick. And so uh, I feel fortunate that we got him. I feel like he's a still at this point in the draft. All right. Next up, Jim Wexel, 247. Jim, go ahead with your question. Okay, Ed. Uh, um, unknowing him, you said that Mike knew him and uh, uh, Matt knew him. Could you uh, go further into that? What did they say about him? What are they saying about his football character? Well, um, you know, Coach Tomlin is looking at it more from a perspective of a parent um, and, and watching the games and seeing it. Coach Canada has been much more um, involved with him on the day-to-day -day activities, and he just speaks very highly of his uh, uh, football knowledge, his ability to work, his his uh, love for the game and way to go approach it. And, um, you know, all been positive. And, and obviously I trust Coach Canada's opinion very strongly. And then when you go back and, and start to you, – you have that information and you start to do your own research, you start to see that it checks out um, across the board. So, again, he'll be a good add to the room, not only from his ability standpoint, but also from um, what he can bring just as a person and as an individual. Okay, next up, Jeff Hathorn with 93.7 fan. Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Eddie, I'm just wondering, you mentioned him fitting in, into the room. Uh, how, now with him there, do you feel like you have a little bit of, of everything in that running back room? I do. Um, I do. I like my room. I love my room. Um, good guys, good football players, young players who can continue to develop, and he just adds to that as well. Um, so, obviously, when we get, um, you know, when, when things start getting closer here to where we can get our hands on them, 
Um, we'll see how they all fit into the equation. Okay, next up, Brooke Pryor from ESPN.com. Brooke, go ahead. Hey, Eddie, I'm curious how – I know you guys have some familiarity with him because of Mike Tomlin and Matt Canada, but how difficult was it to evaluate his injuries with having fewer face-to-face evaluations, no pro days, no chance to recheck physicals, that kind of thing right now? Well, I think just across the board, um, when uh, this whole evaluation process was different for all of us where – we had to rely on um, ulterior motives and ulterior ways of, of communicating with these guys. Um, but we got a great staff um, from John Norwig and all the guys that were involved in stuff like medical. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but, I'm, you know, um, they did a great job in, uh, in getting that evaluation and checking it out, and we feel good about it. Okay, next up we have Mike Pursuta from DVE. Mike, go ahead. Eddie, he he went through a lot in a short time at Maryland, a lot more than most do. Do, do you see the all all the adversity he faced down there uh, having impacted him in a particular way? Um, well, I think we all, just as people and definitely as football players, as as we go through some things and adversity, it makes us better. And I think yes, he was a beneficiary of. Well, I don't know if it's a beneficiary, but he did have some adversity, but he came out the other side of it. Um, stronger, and so um, that's only going to help um, with his football ability and how it applies to our organization. Okay, two more questions here. Mark Caboli from the Athletic. Mark, go ahead. Um, Eddie, um, with uh, Connor and Snell in the room, would you guys be more open to the running back by committee approach now by even adding McFarland? Well, you know, um, without getting too much on the room. And just staying on McFarland, I think he he brings something to the equation in the room that uh, that complements the other guys. And and as we get going in football, we'll see how that all fits and and how guys are playing, and and, and we'll go from there. Okay, last one here, Brian Batko from the Post Gazette. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, Eddie, just, uh, you know, some of the backs that got taken before Anthony, uh, you know, they might have had more production than him, but they also had more usage how much did you guys consider just that, that maybe he brings some relatively fresh legs given that uh you know he, he wasn't used as, as much as some college running backs are i think that's you know that's definitely a positive uh, when you just going through the process and talking about each individual individual running back i'm just speaking about their pros and cons and um that that was a pro in his regard so um you know i think it it doesn't hurt him um you know i think he can be the beneficiary of it but you know, as we continue to go with this, hopefully he just continues to perfect his craft and make the most of what he's working with now.